and welcome to this, the second video um, so far on PowerUpWithPhil.com. This time we're going to be taking a look at using some mathematics, or more specifically some trigonometry in our PowerApp solutions. So, uh, one common use case for Power Apps is to create what's called location-based applications that require distance calculations between two points. Now, in the world of trigonometry, as many of you may know, the Haversine formula, um, the mathematical formula, um, Haversine formula as it's known, which is used to calculate the distance between two points on the surface of a sphere, in this case, obviously, the Earth. It takes into account the curvature of the Earth and therefore is more accurate um, than some other distance calculations which assume more of a flat surface, so from point A to B. So in this video, I'll walk you through the steps to implement the Haversign formula in Power Apps, and then demonstrate how we can use that function or how we can use that solution in the app itself to display the distance between two locations. So again, sit back, relax, um, and we will get started. So. First off, we're going straight into make.powerapps.com and again, as usual, we are starting a Canvas app from blank. What I've done here is I've gone ahead and again, just put in a rectangle and a label over the top of it to give our app a, a title, if you like. And then what I've used here is the address input control. So if we go into insert control and then we've got address input, and I've added two of these. Um, and I've made one of them, which is here, address input three, having the hint text of the from address input, and we want then the to address input um, as well. So we're going to be using these to sort of calculate a, um, a distance, if you like, uh, so from one place to another. And then we're going to see how uh, we can use those values to calculate the distance in miles. So to get the easy parts out of the way, for now, let's create four text labels. So that's one, that's two, and I'm just going to copy and paste those to create four. So we've got two for each of our address input fields. Okay, it's important to rename these because we're going to be referring to them um, throughout the app and obviously label 12, label 13, 12 underscore one, they don't mean a huge amount. So I'm going to rename this first one here as the from long and that's denoting the from address input and this is going to capture the longitude for the next and then I'm going to rename this to the from, from latitude and then repeat that of course for the two longitudes and then the two latitude. Okay, so at the moment they are just showing the default which is the word text. What we want to do is once we've selected an address in here which is going to look up um, on sort of global address books around the world um, uh, an area or road or whatever we put in here um, we want the longitude and latitude returned from those. So instead of this being text at the moment, we're going to um, capture that property, so the longitude and latitude property from our address input. So we have address input three here. I'm going to rename this again to the from uh, to sorry from address input, and then the second one to be called to address input. Okay, so selecting our first one, which is going to be our longitude of the from, we're going to select that from address input control, and we want the selected longitude. Of course, at the moment, this is zero because we haven't selected an address. And if we repeat that here, so the from address input again, but this time it's the selected latitude. And of course, it goes without saying, we want to repeat this for the two address input selected longitude. And then again for the two address input 
selected latitude. Perfect. So all our values are currently zero. Now let's get the more complicated piece out of the way. Let's work in a text label and move that down here. I'm going to uh, increase the font size here, so it's going to be a lot clearer for us. Let's actually make that quite a bit bigger. Okay, so we've just got the word text in here at the moment. What we need to do here is rather than putting any kind of hard-coded value, we need to actually put the have a sign formula, um, which, bear with me, once I've written this out, um, I'll step you through what it actually means. So first off, we're going to use the with command. Um, and again, I'll step you through this um, once we've uh, written it all out. And we're going to then open our curly brackets. And in here, we're going to be setting some variables. So this first one is going to be a variable of just simply the letter R with a value of 3958.8. We're then going to be setting one called P. We're going to be using the pi function here. Lots of you will be familiar with pi from school or university. And then our property. So we obviously need to give the have a sign formula um, the latitude and longitude of point A and point B, because that's what it's going to calculate the distance in miles um, using. So the lat A here, so the latitude of uh, where we're coming from, we're actually going to just be using our from lat control, so that text element that we put in there, dot text. So once we've entered or chosen our um, uh, points of from where we're going and uh, uh, from where we're coming from or where we're going to, those will be automatically populated. And then we want the longitude also from that control. So from long dot text. And then we're going to do the same, but of course this time it's where we're going to. So we're going to get the latitude first off. And then the longitude. OK. That's all the variables we actually need to set so far. Um, so we're just going to leave that um, and we'll close that command off for now. And we'll move into some maths. OK, so let me sort of write this out. And then once I've written it out, I'll come back and step you through each of the um, commands that we're using. Um, so you understand what the have a sign formula is and how we're putting it to use inside power. OK, with that written out, um, I'll then walk you through what this formula is actually doing. So first off, we're using the with command. So this is a inbuilt power apps um, function um, or uh, data sort of manipulation uh, element very common um, uh, across programming languages but here it's creating a local scope if you like where the variables um, uh, can be defined which we've done for rp latte long a etc um, and then used in the calculation of an expression which we're then coming to later on uh, down here as well um, we then move into defining what those variables are. So in this case, the um, uh, variable name of R, in this case, is actually standing for radius. And the reason I've put in 3958.8 is to two decimal places, this is the radius of the Earth, which is 3958.8 miles in, uh, yeah, so that's the radius, sorry, in, in miles. We're then setting a variable, which is P, um, and this is the value of pi divided by 180, which is then for used in the conversion of degrees to something called radians. Don't worry if you don't understand too much about the maths, but it's just to step you through it. We're then taking what we've already known as the, the longitude and latitude from various places that we're going to be looking up. Then the actual calculation itself, so the bulkier part of the formula, so after we set our variables 
um, here and we move into the actual Habersheim formula itself. So this first part, the two times r, is uh, multiplying the radius of the earth by two, simply uh, uh, simply put. And again, that's used later um, in the formula to calculate something called the great circle distance. We're looking at the distance here based on a sphere, not from a flat point to point. We're then timesing that by something called asin. Now, this is something which is actually called the um, arc sine function, and this calculates the arc sine of the expression inside the parenthesis, so what we're coming on to um, uh, be looking at. So uh, the arc sine, or inverse sine, returns a value or an angle, should I say, in radians, which is in the range of minus pi divided by 2 to pi divided by 2. So that's the... the um, uh, the, the range that it's going to return our value in. We're then, of course, coming into um, square root, which is pretty self-explanatory. And then we're moving into this value here, which is 0 0.5. Um, so this is one part of the Haversheim formula that accounts for the curvature of the Earth, and it calculates the difference in latitude and longitude between the two points and converts it to radians. Then in the, um, uh, we're adding this on then to using the cos function or cosine um, function, it multiplies the cosine of the latitude of the two points, again, converted to radians together. And again, is another point of this formula, which accounts for the curvature of the Earth. It's going to be a common theme, this curvature of the Earth part as we move through. Then moving on to the next row, <coughs> or the last actual element here, is um, this is calculating again the difference between the two points, converting it to radian uh, to radians, can then calculates the cosine, subtracts it from one and divides it by two. This being the final part of the Haversheim formula that again accounts for that curvature of the Earth. So all of the calculations here combined calculate what something called the great circle distance between the two points. And that's going to be returned in the same units as the radius of the sphere. In this case, miles. We could put in kilometres or we could even use a different unit of measurement if we wanted to. But overall, this is the Haversheim formula and it's a trigonometry function used to calculate this, this great circle distance between two points on the surface of the Earth. Anyway, with that aside, or actually before I move on, you can see I've not typed this in particularly well, so I'm going to format the text to make it look a lot cleaner as well. Okay, so aside from the maths, let's get going, because once you've done that once, you probably don't want to revisit it or need to revisit it. But there might be a tweak, actually, we can make to this. Let's have a look how we get on. So everything's now set up, so let's give it a whirl. Let's put our from address. And I'm going to use the old favourite of Buckingham Palace. So this will automatically then scan um, the global address books for um, uh, roads or landmarks, buildings, areas, etc. that meet the search term. My particular one, Buckingham Palace, is on Buckingham Palace Road in London, SW1. So I'm going to select that. You'll see some values here have already jumped. So we've already got here our um, longitude and latitude. Now, if we select a, or search for, should I say, a to address, um, let's go for something a little bit different this time. Last time I used Edinburgh Castle, so I am going to do Anfield Road, which is where the Liverpool football ground is in Liverpool. Select that one. And there you see, the longitude and latitude have been returned from those address fields, and we've got a nice value here to show that the distance between Buckingham Palace Road to Anfield Road as the crow flies, so this isn't a traffic um, measurement as such, but as the crow flies, so from point to point using the curvature of the Earth, is as 178.5. But that's rather a long number. So I just said to you it's 178.5, I would never read it's 178.54081. So we've got our value here of the miles between the two places, but that's rather a long value, as I say. So 178.54081092 is not something we would ever really say. It would be 178.5, maybe, miles, or 178.54. So 
So I'm going to actually make a tweak to this and add in the round property or the round control element, should I say. So I want to round this number to two decimal points. So I'm going to add that round and open my um, bracket there. And then after our previous code, I'm going to get rid of one bracket because that previously closed out our with command. And instead, I'm going to encapsulate everything. You, all of that formula that we stepped through um, a short while ago is now encapsulated within this round function. And I'm going to say two. So I want to round the result of all of that trigonometry, <laughs> or all of that um, piece of math, all of that calculation to two decimal places. And I'm going to close that with two curly brackets, one to close the round property and one to close the overall encapsulating with property. And as you can see there, that has changed it to 178.54. Now, that's all well and good, but these look a bit nasty. So people aren't just as generally all your users when you put this to some kind of use for maybe um, uh, tracking uh, sort of environmental um, uh, issues. So you want to know how far people have traveled in a car, for example. Um, and calculate the mileage and then the expenses and the, maybe the, even the emissions used in um, that, that journey, um, your, your users aren't necessarily going to be really interested here. So if we take these controls and we set them to invisible, we can then go ahead and try it again. So they're still there, they're still calculating. So let's select somewhere else. I am going to put Buckingham Palace Road to let's say somewhere a little bit closer to home for it which is Piccadilly Circus and now we've all gone down to it's just over half a mile between Buckingham Palace Road and Piccadilly Circus. So hopefully that was useful um, it's a complex piece of mathematics to use here, but it's something that once you've written once, you can use over and over again for a multitude of different reasons. Any questions, any comments, let me know. For those of you as well who want to um, use uh, kilometres instead of miles, all you need to do is change this radius value to 6371, because that is the um, Earth's radius in kilometres. I'm going to change it back to miles. Okay, thanks for watching. Any questions, any comments, let me know and see you next time.